I think fortune cookies got started in ancient China because they didn't have Tootsie Rolls to offer. So they had to have a good after dinner snack that had some philosophy. And so they had the right materials there, just having, of course, finished building the Great Wall. And they didn't have the pizza makings yet, but they had just the right thing for fortune cookies. And they had two different schools. They had the school of the cookie maker, and then they had the philosopher school, who had to sit day after day on little rice mats on a floor with no air conditioning and write clever sayings to be put in fortune cookies. And you had to have 10 sayings a day or the master would come around with a bamboo stick and swat you. Whack! And you better have some good sayings. And so, the master would collect all the sayings, form the philosopher's unit, and he'd swim through shark infested waters, malaria, mosquito filled swamps, through the desert of the Gobi, all the way over to the fortune cookie makers. Now you see, this is kind of like the Manhattan Project where you had to have everything done a top secret because it was a state secret because it was a philosophy that would guide Chinese fortunes for years. When the master got over there, there was another crew that wrote things out. There were the scribes and they had to inscribe the wisdom that the master had brought from the philosophers. Now they didn't know about where the philosophers were. They thought it all came from a one master. And they would pass down the, the copies, all those copies, back to the master. And then the master would go over to the fortune cookie bakery. And they had special baking hats. They were yellow and they were really tall and they had a little flower on top. And they would go and make the fortune cookies and right when it was at the right time, bam, they put in those little fortunes. But they didn't know anything about the scribes and they didn't know anything about the philosophers. It was all just need to know only. And then the master would gather all those wonderful cookies up and he would go off to the big city and he would sell them to the restaurants. And the money that he made from selling them to the restaurants, he was able to give food and shelter to all the people that worked on the project. And he kept a lot of people really, really happy. Now, you don't know this, and many people don't, but they're out in the Nevada desert about six stories down, there's a group of philosophers. And every day, they have to write 10 witty, pithy sayings that relate to American culture. And every day, there's a man in a black hat and a black suit who rides an elevator from this little shack down into the desert and picks up these pieces of philosophy and he drives in a bulletproof limousine to Las Vegas where he gets on an airplane and flies to Los Angeles to the fortune cookie factory. Now, that's for regular fortune cookies. That same man has a special contract with fancy fortune cookies in Indianapolis. But he's not an Indian. He has to go up there on a special bullet train underground that only people in the Pentagon and the President know about. And he comes up through a special pneumatic tube in the back of the factory. 
when Mr. Mike Fry greets him with a secret handshake <laughs> and escorts him into the scribing room where they have special aliens writing down these fortunes because these aliens have four hands and they're ambidextrous and can write four times as fast as your average American. And they're non-union. And that's what adds something special to these fortune cookies. Thank you.